Hey guys, after the last video I put out, I had a lot of people requesting for me to show you guys exactly how to set up Sega CD on your RetroArch build on your PlayStation Classic. That's what we're going to do in this video. It's Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Hey guys, so what we're going to do today is we're just going to get your Sega CD running up on your PlayStation Classic through RetroArch. It's actually pretty easy. It's very similar to most of the other CD-based game consoles. Uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to locate the BIOS files. Uh, there are three different BIOS files depending on the region in which you are currently using or tr the games in which you are trying to use. Uh, so I've got them listed right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on screen. Uh, so it's BIOS underscore CD underscore E and then the other one is BIOS underscore CD underscore J, and then BIOS underscore CD underscore U. And that's going to represent the three different regions. You've got Japan for J, you've got U for US, and you've got E for uh, for PAL or Europe. If you are only gonna be using one of the regions, one specific region's games, then you can only load or you can transfer one in. Now, in terms of the BIOS files, I cannot tell you guys where to download it. All I'm gonna do is I'll leave the names of them in the description down below. I also put them on screen uh, for you guys to be able to search for them or find them your own way, but I can't actually indicate where to locate them. The next thing that I also wanna talk about is a software called CHD Man, and this is gonna become important later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave a link to that in the description down below as well, so you guys can actually download this uh, zip file. And what this zip file is going to do is if you guys are having trouble locating CHD file games, which is the preferred file structure in which you're gonna to want to run your Sega CD games on, uh, this software will convert it. So if you're having trouble finding CHD, but you are able to find BinQ, this software will convert BinQ over to CHD. So that way you can then get the proper file format loaded into your uh, USB drive, and then you can run those games. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna load our BIOS files onto our USB drive. So I've got my USB drive plugged in. I just have to open up my USB drive, which is right here. So it depends on what you're currently using. I'm gonna load this onto my BleemSync build just because that's where I've done most of my RetroArch work. But if you've got an AutoBleam build, you have gotta find the file. So if you're running AutoBleam, you're gonna have a RetroArch folder right on the root of your drive. That's where you're gonna to wanna to double click. If you're running BleemSync, you're gonna double click BleemSync, go to OPT, and then your RetroArch folder's right in here. So again, if you are running AutoBleam, this RetroArch folder should be right on the root of your USB drive. Either way, we need to enter into this RetroArch folder. We need to go into our systems folder here. And as you can see, I've already got my BIOS files loaded in uh, because I clearly had that set up so I could do that demo video for you guys. But what you're gonna need to do is you're just gonna hover over your BIOS files, click and drag them directly onto the root of the folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace the current files. So they are there. As you can see, I've got now those three BIOS files located within the system folder. The next thing that we need to do is we need to load games onto our console. So we're just gonna scroll back and I'm gonna go into my RetroArch games folder and I've already got a Sega CD folder created. So as you can see, I've got a bunch of games in here. Uh, all of them are gonna be in CHD format and that is what I found has run the best. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to convert uh, a bin Q into a CHD in the event that you can't locate a CHD file for any specific game, but you should be able to find them if you just do a little bit of a search. So uh, regardless of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to convert from bin Q over to CHD. We're gonna go ahead and minimize that. We need to extract this folder, which I've already done. So I've got it right over here. I'm gonna double click on it. And within that folder, you're gonna notice that there is an application here and then there's a bunch of batch files. So each of the batch files do something different. So in this case, it says it'll convert a Q or GDI to CHD. That's the one that we're gonna to wanna to use. If you wanted to reverse it and you wanted to convert your CHD into a bin Q, it also has that option here. So it's got extract CHD to Q, and then you've also got another one that extracts CHD to GDI. We don't need those two. We're only gonna be using the top two uh, batch file and the application. What we need to do now is we need to locate a game that uh, is in bin Q format. So I do have one already pre-downloaded. I'm just gonna pull that up right now. Okay, perfect. So here we are. So you can see I've got all of my uh, all of my games right over in this folder here, and most of them are CHD, as you can see, but there is one disc two for Night Trap is in bin Q. 
So you can see that there. The nice thing about the software is if you drag or if you if you put the application in the folder and let's say you had 10 games that are all bin queue, it will still function and you can actually do all of those games in one shot. Now keep in mind the software isn't super fast. It does take quite a bit of time, but that is the easiest way to do it. So what we need to do is we need to copy our CHD man software and our batch file from the folder that we just extracted and we need to load it into our games folder. As you can see now they're sitting right in here. What we're going to do is we're going to double click on this Q or GDI to CHD batch file. And what that's going to do is it's going to send instructions to the application. The application will run and it'll create a CHD file for anything that it can locate a Q file for. Now this is important. If your Q file doesn't point to your bin file, then you're not going to be able to run properly and you're not going to be able to create that CHD file but it should be fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this. You're gonna notice a little uh, black screen pop up. And as you can see on the bottom over here, it says compressing and it's currently at 1.5 or 3, 3% now. Uh, this, this takes a while, um, depending on the size of the game. So just keep that in mind. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward so you guys don't have to sit through this. Okay, so that took about uh, four or five minutes there. Uh, I do want to make note that if you've got, say, 10 games in there, it's going to take quite a while. So be prepared to be patient. If you've got a bunch of games that you're converting, it's probably best that you run the application and just walk away from the computer, let it do its thing, and then check back on it in half an hour or an hour later. Uh, once the little black box is gone, you know that it's completed. You'll also be able to see right away in here that I now have a bin file, I've got a Q file, and I've also got a CHD file now. So uh, what I actually did was the Night Trap Disk 1 was also bin Q. I had previously converted it and I tested it to make sure it does run and it does. So I did want to do that in advance before I went ahead and made this video and I actually fully tested it out and it does appear to run well. So now that I have a CHD file, I can go ahead and my, I can delete my bin Q because I don't need them. They're essentially duplicates of my CHD. I'm also going to go ahead and delete my uh, CHD man and the script from my games folder because I don't need it there. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to load our game onto our USB drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my USB drive. And again, depending on how you've got your USB built, uh, if it's auto bleam or if it's bleam sync, depending on where you've located your games, uh, you're gonna to need to make sure you access your games folder. So in my case, I've got a RetroArch games folder right on the root of the drive, double click on it. I'm gonna go down to Sega CD and you can see most of my games are already there but I just need to add my uh, Night Trap Disk 2, so I'm gonna copy that and paste it over. Now I do wanna mention, now that that's finished, I have not successfully been able to find a way to change disks with either of the uh, Sega CD emulators on the RetroArch build. I know that there was supposed to be a way with the Pico Drive Sega CD or the Genesis emulator, but I can't even seem to get it to run any of the games properly. Uh, I can't get it to recognize the games uh, I can't get the games to recognize it as a compatible core, so I'm still working on that. Once I figure out a solution to get multi-disc games running, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Um, but as of right now, multi-disc games are not functioning, at least not that I'm aware of. If any of you guys are familiar with how to do it, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below if you do know how to do that, because that would be awesome, and uh, I'm sure everyone else in the community would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so now that we've got our game loaded in, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to close my folders. Next, all we need to do is pop our USB drive into our PlayStation Classic and boot it up. So I'm going to go ahead and make that switch over now, and I'm going to show you guys Sega CD running on your PlayStation Classic. Okay, guys, so here we are. We've loaded up our uh, RetroArch build. I'm currently running 1.7.6 through the BleemSync hack. What we need to do is we're going to go ahead and scroll down to load our content. We're going to go over to our directory, and we're going to find our media folder. We're going to locate our games folder. Mine is called RetroArch Games. Going to click on that. Then we've got to scroll down to Sega CD. Now we're going to find our game. So as I'd mentioned, Night Trap is the only game that uh, I've converted from bin uh, from bin Q to CHD and I'm going to show you guys that it runs now of course this is a bad example because I don't have a way to get that second disc to run so if you do pick up Night Trap and you start playing it and you get to a point where you got to swap discs I can't really help you I don't I don't have a solution to that right now but as I mentioned before if I can find one I'll be sure to let you guys know so I am going to load it up regardless I'm going to scroll down and select the 
Genesis Plus GX core, and we're going to run the game. Excellent. So the BIOS is going to load up right away, and you're going to notice it says just press the start button to load. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And here we go. So now you can actually see that the game is clearly loading. I'm going to see if I can skip ahead. Now it's interesting because this is a very popular game, but I've literally never played this game. I have, uh, I've never tried it. So it may be something that's interesting. I did see that it was kind of a strange game, especially on the Sega CD. It looks as though we are, are going to be fussing around with a lot of different cameras, and I'm not quite sure what the objective is here, but um, yeah, it's uh, it looks like what we need to do is we need to jump around between different cameras, and we have to catch guys that are breaking into the house. But I have absolutely no idea what we're supposed to do here. So if any of you guys have ever played this game and you guys know what you're supposed to do, please let me know in the comment section below because I, my mind is completely blown. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing in this game other than switching between a bunch of cameras and watching people, unless that's exactly what you're supposed to do. So yeah, so that's it. That That's, uh, that's how this game is running. We're going to go ahead and exit out of this game. I'm going to load up one more game just to show you guys that the core is running properly with the BIOS. So we're going to load our content. And actually, before we do that, I'm going to mention that if you load the database and then you try to scan it, you're going to have uh, you're not going to have as much luck. I think I did try to do that and only a couple games were registered. Yeah. So only Night Trap, for whatever reason, that's the only game that was able to be scanned. Everything else wouldn't populate within the playlist. So I don't have a solution for playlist right now for uh, Sega CD, but yeah. Um, yeah, the workaround is just simply go over to your main menu, go down to load content, uh, open up your directory, media, and then load your uh, your games manually. So that's the that's the only way that I could recommend doing it right now. But anyways, we're gonna load up one more game. Uh, why don't we go ahead and load up? Let's go ahead and load up Pitfall. So we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna select Genesis Plus GX. We're going to press the start button to enter. We're just going to skip through as much as we can to get into the actual game. There we go. Okay, so... Yeah, so there we go. It's running well. Uh, this is one of those games that I would probably recommend to almost everybody to at least try uh, if you haven't played Pitfall. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, this was probably one of my earliest gaming experiences. Um, I remember having this for the PC as well as on Super Nintendo. So this game is uh, a lot of fun. It's pretty difficult, but uh, it's definitely worth a try. So if you haven't played Pitfall, definitely give this game a shot because it is fantastic. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log off here, but uh, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or any comments, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.